Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself. My name is Chris, and in this episode, we are going to have a look at the syntax and variables of Java. In the last episode, however, I promised to reveal some of the mysteries behind the auto generated code. So let's look at this piece by piece. Let's get rid of this first. And now we just have our main class. Classes are like the core ingredient of object oriented programming. This is even more so important in Java because every single piece of code that you write has to be inside of a class. And as you've probably already guessed, these curly braces have something to do with this. And that's very true. The curly braces denote the so-called scope of the class. Everything that's inside of these braces is part of the class. That's all I have to say to that for now. Now remember when we first created the class and I urged you to click this first item here? Doing that generated this piece of code for us. And this is a method. Now I won't be explaining what a method is or what it does, because this is a whole topic in itself. For now it's just important to know that whenever you start up your program, it looks for a method called main, right here. The main method is the entry point of your program. This is where the execution will begin. As you can see, it has curly braces of its own, so it has its own scope. And since the main method is part of the main class, all the content that is in here is part of the main class, so we're good to go. Now let's get rid of this for now, because this is not important. I don't want to waste more time than I have already. Now this line right here lets us output something to the screen. For now this is our only way to display something to the user. Now, I know I spent quite a bit of time on this, but I remember when I first started out, I wanted to know why it is important that I write these things. I wanted to know why do I have to write a main method, why do I have to have classes. Because when I started out, I was just told, do it like this or else it won't work. So yeah, now at least you have a rough idea of why this is important. We will cover those in more detail in future tutorials of course. But for now let's get to the second part of this tutorial, variables. So, what is a variable? You have probably heard of them in math class before. And they are really useful to us because they allow us to store different values inside of them and perform mathematical operations on them. Then we can use that result and store that inside another variable to do something else with it. I'm going to demonstrate this to you now, and once I'm done with it, the concept should become a little bit clearer to you. I'm going to explain everything piece by piece, of course, but for now just observe. Okay, so what do you think happens when I run this program? If you guessed it will print out 12, then you're correct. So what's going on here? Let's look at this step by step. First I created a variable of the type int, which stands for integer. Then I give a name to this variable, in this case number 1. And then I assigned a value to this variable, here 5. The same concept applies to the next line, where here I called it number 2, and I assigned the value 7 to it. And lastly, I created a variable called result, which I assign the sum of the values of number 1 and number 2, which in this case makes 12. Down here, like before, I printed out the result. It is worth noting, though, that I didn't use quotation marks like up here. This is because I wanted to get the value that is stored inside the result variable. If I had put in quotation marks in here, I can just demonstrate this real quick, we wouldn't get 12, but instead we would get the word result. And I'll explain the reason for that in the next tutorial, when we get to know more types of variables. But for now, let's just change this back. Now this is cool, because this is really expressive. You can read this line as, create a variable of the type int, call it number 1, and assign the value 5 to it. Same down here. Create a variable of the type int, call it result, and assign the value of number 1 plus number 2 to it. It's pretty straightforward once you've seen it in action. Now the last thing I'm going to address in this tutorial is the meaning of statements. What is a statement? Well, a statement is what I pretty much just explained to you. This right here is a statement. Create a variable, call it number 1 and assign the value 5 to it. This is one instruction within your program and it has to be ended with a semicolon. You have to end these statements with semicolons, otherwise the compiler will get confused on where one statement starts and where the other one ends. And since the compiler is responsible for turning your code into machine code which can be executed, this can be pretty bad. As a beginner, you will probably forget the semicolons a lot. I know I did. <laughs> but don't worry about it. This is one cool thing about using IDEs. Whenever you make an error in your syntax, like forgetting a semicolon for instance, you will get an error message telling you what went wrong. Here it says, syntax error, insert semicolon to complete local variable declaration statement. 
whatever that means. Well, I know what it means, but you probably don't. Not yet, that is. So just go right here and fix the problem, and everything's good again. Now it's common practice to start a new line whenever you finish a statement, and you can probably already see why it makes sense. It's way easier to read for us as a programmer. The compiler doesn't care about it. As long as the statements are separated by semicolons, you can write it however you want. Say something like this, for instance, would be perfectly fine for the compiler. But this is really ugly and confusing, so let's not get into bad habits here. There we go. But alas, this is all for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, feel free to subscribe so you won't miss out on new videos. See you then!